Hello and welcome back to Daredo.io, the journey into DevOps. And in this video, I'm going to be talking about the history of Linux, how Linux actually came about. Well, now you know Linux is an operating system from the last video, but how exactly did it start to exist? Well, it was created by a guy named Linus Torvald in 1991 when he was still a computer science student at the University of Helsinki in Finland. Before Linus Torvalds created Linux, there was Unix operating system and Linux is literally a clone of Unix. But Unix was more of closed source, more difficult and expensive to use the commercial version. And Linux, which was created by Linus, suggested some improvements to the guys behind Unix, which obviously was rejected. And that led him to embark on, on the Linux project and he made it open source, which means free. And anyone could take the source code and update it if they like, do whatever they want to do with it, create their own distribution of it. But it's basically free. So let's go back to, you know, time memorial when before Linux came about because I like to take things from the foundation. So now we know that Linux itself is actually not the starting point. There was something before Linux. So we need to know more about that thing, which is Unix. So how did Unix itself come about? So Unix was originally created at Bell Labs. It's a laboratory where they do industrial research and scientific development. And the company that owned the laboratory at the time was AT&T Corporation. They used to call them American Telephone and Telegraph Company. The company's business in the 70s, they provided voice, video, data, and internet telecommunications and professional services to business, consumers, and government agencies. Those guys were huge, big. And during its long history, AT&T was, you know, at that time, the world's largest telephone company the world's largest cable television operator and they were more or less like a regulated monopoly well this company was created over 130 years ago they still exist till today <laughs> you can check them out att.com by the way bell labs today they are owned by nokia i think they took it over since uh, 2016 well the guys are 88 and t then who owned bell labs they decided to create unix which was originally intended to be a convenient platform for programmers to develop software. At first, Unix was not designed to be portable or for multitasking. Uh, it was at a later time that they started making it more multitasking, multi-user, using a time-sharing configuration. Because before then, the computers that existed could not be used by more than one user using it at a time. So it, let's think about it. What sort of computer was existing before Unix, the mainframe computers? Yes. Well, I'm not going to go into the history of mainframes, but just for you to know, before Unix was the mainframe computers, which were those huge computers. In 1964, MIT, Bell Labs, and General Electric started a project and to develop an OS for the mainframe computer and they wanted it to handle more than one user at a time and at that time they called it Multics. But what happened to Multics? Multics to many they argue that Multics was a failed project. And the reason why some people don't think it's a failed project is because most of the innovations and technologies we see today are actually based on Multics. But Multics on its own didn't really see the light of the day because it failed. And the reason it failed was because it was really, really complex. The architecture was complex. People really struggled to use it. And gradually, the researchers and the programmers and the geeks that were working on this Multics project, they started getting out of the project until it remained four guys. Ken Thompson, Dennis Ritchie, Douglas McCroy, and Joe Osana. Gradually, even two of them dropped off, remaining Ken Thompson and Dennis Ritchie. And these two then decided to rethink the whole thing. They decided to use their experience developing the Multics to begin a smaller and less complex operating system using a different programming language altogether, which was C. And originally at that point, they weren't officially backed by Bell Labs, General Electric or MIT or anyone. They were just doing their own thing, developing it on the side. At that point, they didn't want to name it Multics, even though the whole idea started from Multics. They decided to name it Unix. Not the Unix with the X this time around is Unix with a CS, which meant uniplexed information and computing service 
as opposed to multics which was multiplexed. The design for Unix is Uniplex. Let's now fast forward to 1991 when Linus Torvalds decided to create a clone of the Unix operating system. Why did he even decide to do that? Well, I said it before, Unix was expensive very expensive and it was closed source. Even though it was to some extent Unix was available for the education sector or some NGOs or, but privately people couldn't use it. It was really very expensive. No one couldn't really afford it. And for programmers who can afford to do things like that, how, how would they be able to become more creative and come up with in innovations where they can't even afford to have such an amazing operating system? So Linus decided to make a clone of the Unix operating system and he made it free. Originally, he, he didn't even name it uh, Linux. He originally named it Freaks which was a way to combine both free and also an allusion for Unix. So he uploaded the files, the source code for the Linux operating system that he has developed, the kernel. He uploaded it to the FTP server of the university that he was studying and the administrator of the server just named the folder that he put it in Linux without consulting Linus himself. <laughs> but later on, Linus consented to the name and said, okay, fine, we won't go with freaks anymore. We just call it Linux and he later uploaded an audio guide that demonstrated how the name should be pronounced. Hello, this is Linus Torvalds and I pronounce Linux as Linux. And today we have the largest companies in the world that run their applications on Linux. Not a lot of people actually talk about Unix these days. It's more of Linux, Linux, Linux. We have Google, Twitter, Facebook, Amazon, IBM, NASA, New York Stock Exchange. They all run the Linux operating system. Even in my country, um, MTN, Etel, all these Nigerian telecoms companies even banks, GT Bank, all these banks in Nigeria, they use Linux operating system to run some of their applications going on there. Even Android, the Android that you see today, it's, it's a modified version of the Linux kernel. Well, today, there are many, many, many distributions of Linux. So there's Red Hat, there's Ubuntu, CentOS, Debian, Fedora, Suzy, Kubuntu. When you see all of these operating systems around, now you know what it means. So it's just a distribution of Linux. People take the source code that Linux created and they create their own version of it. They make enhancements, they make changes, they update things and they just give it a name. Alright, thank you very much for watching this video. If you like it, don't forget to subscribe to this channel. Don't forget to press the bell button to get notification each time I release new content. After this, we're going to start getting crazy and hands-on in this mentoring program with DevOps. Thank you very much and see you in the next video.